Dear reader, I'm Tony and this is Book Text. Today I have my May reading wrap up, but first, our word of the day is the word infractuous. Infractuous is an adjective and it means winding or circuitous. So a plot might be infractuous and that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes we need some time with the story while it meanders while it is infractuous. So I thought I would start with a check-in on my uh, Goodreads challenge. <clears throat> I set the goal of 80 books because that's what I read last year and I wanted to uh, you know, keep up a, a, a pattern, the momentum, right? I currently have read 69 books or 86% of my goal, so I'm cruising. And normally I read more in the summer because I'm not spending so much time uh, teaching and grading papers. So, uh, b however, this year I've been able to keep up a steady reading flow as I have prioritized reading at, in my schedule. So I'm doing really well with my goal and I'm actually hoping to finish my reading goal of 80 by my birthday, which is at the end of next month which is also conveniently the, well, by the end of June, I should say, it's conveniently the halfway point of the year. It will be really cool to, to meet my goal halfway through the year, and then we'll see where it takes me from there. So I read a lot of books this month, and some of them I'm not going to mention because they were for work, or there's a couple of small chapter books that I read with my nieces and nephews over video calls every day at lunch. That has been the highlight of my quarantine schedule is reading to my nieces and nephews. <clears throat> but I will share with you um, the, the novels and, and nonfiction books that I read. So I'll start with uh, Shades of Milk and Honey by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is a light fantasy Regency romance. Um, it was very interesting. So this is actually in the, the first in the series. So I'm looking forward to finding more in this series because I liked this one. There was fun twists on your typical Regency romance plot. Uh, there was exciting action. The use of magic is subtle and breathtakingly described. Beautiful um, things happening in this book. So I gave this one five stars. I enjoyed it. Then I read Louise Penny's The Brutal Telling. This is book five in her uh, Armand Gamache mystery series. This one had some really interesting uh, things going on, some, some devastating things that happened to the characters that you have grown to love through these through the books, and and I, there's some things happen in this story that ha will surely have consequences, severe consequences on future books, and so I'm I'm really looking forward to the next one. I gave this uh, four stars. It's not my favorite, uh, but it was good. Um, the language in Louise Penny's books is just fun to savor, so really enjoyed that one. Then I listened to a couple of audiobooks, well, lots of audiobooks this, this month. I listened to All Things Wise and Wonderful by James Harriet. Um, in this edition, in, or this, this installment of his series that are kind of like part memoir, part fiction, he intersperses his typical Yorkshire vet stories, which are always a little bit humorous, sometimes quite sad. He intersperses those with tales of uh, Royal Air Force training during World War II. And oh, I thought that was interesting. That was a, that was a unique twist because there was always something in his training that reminded him of an experience he had as a vet or a person that he met as a vet. And I love the, the kind of intimate stories that we get about um, his work. So I enjoyed that. He has a boyish enthusiasm then I can actually get behind. I don't, it doesn't bother me. So I gave that one five stars. I also listened to books six, seven, eight, and nine in the Maisie Dobbs series. Um, they are Among the Mad, The Mapping of Love and Death, A Lesson in Secrets, 
and an elegy for Eddie. I am racing through the Maisie Dobbs books, uh, and I gave each of these four stars. They're just very consistent. Then I read In This Mountain, ooh, very shiny cover. In This Mountain by Jan Karen. This is, ooh, this is, I don't remember which, so long here, the seventh novel in her um, Mitford series. Um, I, this is another one where devastating things have happened to the people that you've grown to love through the series, um, particularly um, something that happens that keeps Father Tim at home for the summer when he's planning to go out and do some work for the church. And he battles with depression in an awfully familiar way. So I, I thought that she handled that really well. Um, I remember having depression um, and I didn't, obviously it wasn't chronic depression. It was kind of a circumstantial depression. And I remember not wanting to do the things that I love to do and uh, sensing a darkness over everything. And that that um, really comes to play in, in this story. And it was, it felt um, very real and very helpful. So I gave this one five stars. I also read The Odd Women by George Gissing. This was part of the Odd Women read-along. And I have kind of summarized my thoughts on this in a previous video that I will put a link to below. But I did give this one, I think, four stars. I can't remember exactly. Four stars. It was good. Um, it was my favorite. Some things happened that I didn't quite agree with or, or I think worked uh, out well for the plot, but I but most of it was amazing. Some characters <gasps> that I want to know in real life. Uh, I also read Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. This is a nonfiction book about writing and um, it has some good writing advice, some life advice. Uh, I have started this book many times, but I haven't quite finished it. It's now I finished it. It's gentle but it's honest. And uh, I have started implementing some of her suggestions. Um, things like just write, don't worry about perfection, don't be afraid or embarrassed by the mess of the writing process. And I try to teach um, some things like that to my students as well. She also emphasizes um, character over plot which is something that I look for in my own writing and in the things that I read. So I gave this one five stars. I read The Professor and the Madman by Simon Winchester. This is a nonfiction book about the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary, specifically looking at two people who were heavily involved in its creation. And I thought this was sometimes a little too sensational about the events surrounding the dictionary, um, but but overall, its tone was quite compassionate and sympathetic to the people who you know to the, to its subjects. And my favorite part of this book is about the dedication. So, one of the men, one of the contributors to the the dictionary, the madman mentioned, murdered a man um, in what can probably be assumed was a schizophrenic episode. And that man kind of, you know, he had a life, he had a family, and he was basically been forgotten by time. He doesn't even have a marker on his grave anymore. Um, so this book was dedicated to him and there was a nice kind of uh, message about him towards the end of the book. I, I appreciated that. I gave this one, I think, let's see, I gave this three stars was good, but it was not the best nonfiction that I've ever read. Then I listened to yet another audiobook because I've been doing a lot of exercising and I listen to the audiobooks, audiobooks when I exercise, as well as when I do my chores, uh, mowing the grass. Ugh, hate doing that, but it's, a, it's like a good hour when I get to listen to more books. So I listened to Mr. Churchill's Secretary by Susan Ilya McNeil. This is the first in the Maggie Hope spy mystery series and set in World War II. The plot was pretty good and twisty, um, and there was a couple deep characters who felt uh, nuanced and, and well-rounded, 
but I didn't feel like Maggie Hope, the main character, was one of them. Um, and so that disappointed me a little bit. I wanted to know more about her. And it's just possible that the writing style wasn't quite what I wanted to be able to see her inner dialogue um, the way that I that I like to. So I gave this one three stars. I do plan to continue reading the series or listening to the series uh, eventually. It's not it's not my first priority, but I'll put it on my you know holds list. Uh, my library offered uh, people to come in by appointment this month, and so I went back and checked out some more books. Um, and I read Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. This is a graphic novel with um, Isabel's typical kind of, you know, not, not entirely realistic illustrations. It is about the, the fictional world that the Bronte siblings created in their youth. And its focus is on Charlotte. Uh, so this, this story was fun, uh, inventive, adventurous, and quite poignant. Uh, you know it's, it gets pretty somber because you know what happens to all of these siblings, how their lives end. Um, I, I thought the, the focus on Charlotte was interesting, but it made me wish that we had more of Anne's juvenilia still um, accessible uh, because she's my favorite Bronte. But this this was this was still pretty good. I gave it uh, four stars. Another library selection was um, Dear Fahrenheit four fifty one by Annie Spence. This was a funny funny book. So Annie Spence is a librarian, and this book is just a collection of letters that she has written to books. Uh, you know, Dis Dear Miss Marple series, as with the title Dear Fahrenheit four fifty one. Um, Dear Frog and Toad, Storybook Treasury. I, I kind of want to own this book for myself because I want to know more about these books. I want to know more about this relationship that she has with books. Some of the books are just random things that she finds in the stacks of the library. Others are books that she has read or has tried to read or wants to read. Um, you'll, you'll, I think this kind of feels a lot like uh, Booktube in the form of a book because she's giving you a lot of recommendations. So when you read this, you'll want to have Goodreads handy so that you can start adding things to your want to read list. Love this book. I gave it uh, five stars and I've actually started to write my Goodreads reviews as letters to the books and it's so much fun. So I I'm gonna continue doing that as long as I can as long as I have time to do it, right? It takes a little bit longer. Um, the last library book that I read this month was A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is my first uh, time reading one of his books. It is also his debut novel written in the 80s. Um, I finished this book right before bed one night and that was a mistake because it left my mind churning. So the narrative in this book covers two different timelines in the, the main character's life. The first timeline is set in uh, shortly after World War II in her native land of Nagasaki, Japan. Um, and she is pregnant with her first child. And so it's, it um, explores a relationship she has with some friends there, kind of the, the, the newness of life post-atomic bomb but also the devastation of life post-atomic bomb. And then um, the second timeline, second storyline, is uh, set in the 80s in England. Um, and it's right after the main character's child, the one that she was pregnant with in the first storyline, has committed suicide. And so she's looking back on this uh, ha these happy days of her life, some kind of unusual things that happen in the summer right before she has her baby. The last couple of pages suggest to you that the main character is an unreliable narrator and that she has mixed up some of the details. And so that I'm still thinking, several days later, I'm still thinking about like what it means, what actually happened, does it matter what actually happened? Um, and so I, I really enjoyed this. I will definitely seek out more Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, I gave this one four stars. 
I've been continuing to read the Cop Sisters novel. So this is Miss Cop's Midnight Confessions. It is book three. Um, these stories are set in the outset of World War I in New Jersey. And they follow um, three sisters. The main character is Constance Cop, who these are real people. So this is based on real people and semi-real events. Constance Cop is the world, the, the nation's first female sheriff's deputy, and um, she deals a lot with female criminals. Uh, this book was kind of a gentler ride than the kind of wild, adventurous um, first two novels. And I liked that it was a little bit gentler. Uh, Constance kind of dips her toes into court proceedings more. And that was really interesting to me. And the way that the different plots kind of combine perfectly at the end um, really helped me to see the, the power of female friendships and how women can help each other in various circumstances by being friends um, and by doing their jobs. I loved this. Really enjoy it. We'll continue reading the series. I mean, I'm very excited to continue. Um, so I'm going to try and track down the next book. My library doesn't have it, so I'm going to have to maybe purchase it for myself again. But that's okay, because this book probably needs its sister book to be with it. The last book is an audiobook. It is a reread for me. I own the actual book. So embarrassed. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed by this. This is like one of my guilty pleasure books. Uh, so I love Star Wars novelizations, and um, I so I reread or re-listened to Rogue One, which is my favorite film, uh, Star Wars film, and also Star Wars book. Um, I love the you know you Star Wars is, is has this epic nature to it, um, but this book gets down to kind of like the the small details of ordinary people who are who are asked to participate in this epic story and I, I just enjoy spending more time in this beloved universe um, you know I grew up on Star Wars I, I had many bouts of obsession with Star Wars in my youth and now in my adulthood obviously um, but you get more face time with these characters so it's it's actually much more interesting to to read the book than to watch one of the one of the movies. I love it. What else did I want to say about this? I took some notes because I had a lot to say. Uh, uh, oh, the audiobook. The audiobook has some charming sound effects, which you don't want in most books. But in the Star Wars book, it's, it's kind of fun. And it also has some Star Wars music in it. Really enjoy listening. It's a really easy um, thing to listen to while I'm exercising or mowing the, the grass, as I mentioned. Um, because I can escape and I don't have to think about all the boring things that I'm doing every step after the step after a step. So, love that book. That's a lot of books. I believe that that was, oh, I can't even count because I lumped all of the Maisie Dobbs books together. So there was four of those. Okay, so I think I read something like 17 or 18 books this month. What did you read in the month of May? Uh, are, you, are you experiencing a similar like disruption in your reading routines? My disruption has been in, the, in, the, in favor of reading more, but I imagine a lot of people, it's disrupted them in favor of reading less. Tell me about your experience reading this month, and remember, there's always another book.